In this science update, we will address sex, lies, and the Constitution of the United States in reverse order. First up, the Constitution, beginning with an amazing headline from Jacobin.com on August 17, 2023. Joe Biden's DOJ is claiming, quote, there is no constitutional right to a stable climate, end quote. Here's the lead, quote, in the same week large swaths of the U.S. were under extreme heat warnings, Joe Biden's Justice Department filed its most recent motion to dismiss a landmark climate case by arguing that nothing in the Constitution guarantees the right to a secure climate, end quote. I will read the first two paragraphs. As a heat wave scorched America with record-breaking temperatures this June, the Biden administration attempted to block a landmark climate lawsuit by claiming that, quote, there is no constitutional right to a stable climate system, end quote, according to court records reviewed by the Lever. Remember, Biden claims to be the green president. The assertion in Juliana versus United States, which echoed both the Donald Trump and Barack Obama administration's legal claims in the same long-running case, was part of the Justice Department's latest attempt to halt the suit brought by children who assert that the Constitution requires the federal government to maintain a climate that supports human life. WTF? Even if the Constitution does not require, quote, the federal government to maintain a climate that supports human life, end quote, it seems like a good idea. In fact, one could argue that the federal government's primary responsibility is to maintain a society and a climate that support the lives of citizens. In fact, the founding document of this country is its Declaration of Independence. Specifically, the United States was declaring its independence from Great Britain. Please bear with me as I read the entire document. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. It seems obvious to me that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness all require a stable climate. Without a stable climate, we're all dead, including the citizens of the United States. If we're all dead, then it becomes quite difficult to pursue liberty, much less happiness. Yet the Justice Department in the current administration, along with the two previous presidential administrations, has determined that there is no constitutional right to a stable climate. Again, this comes from the Green New Deal president. By Green and Deal, I suspect they are drawing a parallel with Trump's art of the deal, or how to scam more greenbacks from more people. Moving on to story number two, which is related to our right to a stable climate, and also to our right to have access to evidence resulting from research supported by the citizenry. An article published on September 5th, 2023 in the Free Press is headlined, I left out the full truth to get my climate change paper published. The subhead from climate scientist Patrick T. Brown, quote, I got published in Nature because I stuck to a narrative I knew the editors would like. That's not the way science should work, end quote. I'll read a few lines from the article in the Free Press. I am a climate scientist. Why does the press focus so intently on climate change as the root cause? perhaps for the same reasons I just did in an academic paper about wildfires in Nature, one of the world's most prestigious journals. It fits a simple storyline that rewards the person telling it. The paper I just published, Climate Warming Increases Extreme Daily Wildfire Growth Risk in California, focuses exclusively on how climate change has affected extreme wildfire behavior. I knew not to try to quantify key aspects other than climate change in my research because it would dilute the story that prestigious journals like Nature and its rival Science want to tell. This matters because it is critically important for scientists to be published in high-profile journals. In many ways, they are the gatekeepers for career success in academia. And the editors of these journals have made it abundantly clear 
both by what they publish and what they reject, that they want climate papers that support certain pre-approved narratives, even when those narratives come at the expense of broader knowledge for society." End quote. Trust me, I know what Patrick T. Brown means with respect to those narratives come at the expense of broader knowledge for society. The paper in the prestigious peer-reviewed journal Nature was published on August 30th, 2023, written by Patrick T. Brown and seven other authors. Again, the paper is titled, Climate Warming Increases Extreme Daily Wildfire Growth Risk in California. I'll read a short segment from the abstract. So far, anthropogenic warming has enhanced the aggregate expected frequency of extreme daily wildfire growth by 25% on average relative to pre-industrial conditions. But for some fires, there was approximately no change, and for other fires, the enhancement has been as much as 461%. Again, that's 461% enhancement in extreme daily wildfire growth. That's a lot and it sounds terrible. Imagine how much worse it would sound if we were told the full truth. Speaking of lies, you can stop sending me stories about chemtrails and other ridiculous non-scientific nonsense. A colleague of mine used to tell his students on the first day of class that this class will focus on science, not non-science, otherwise known as nonsense. Devastated, devastating fires in California, Canada, Maui, Australia, and elsewhere are not ignited by space lasers or direct energy weapons. The frequency and intensity of these fires is a direct result of abrupt irreversible climate change. I know this from my own experience as a wildland firefighter, expert witness for several legal cases in involving fires, and a professor and therefore a researcher and teacher of wildland fire. In the story published by the Free Press, Brown admitted that the approach taken by him and his co-authors, quote, caused it to be less useful than it could have been. He claimed, quote, you might be wondering at this point if I'm disowning my own pa paper. I'm not. On the contrary, I think it advances our understanding of climate change's role in day-to-day -day wildfire behavior. It's just that the process of customizing the research for an imminent journal caused it to be less useful than it could have been. End quote. We all deserve to know the full truth, as medical doctors agreed regarding our personal health in about 1970. Some people want you to be surprised when society disintegrates. I'm not among those people. No surprises from me. And now for the third and final part, the sex part. We were just kidding about the sex part. We wanted you to watch the whole video all the way to the end. I know it's a burden. But as a small consolation prize, instead of sex, we have a few Yorkshire Terriers playing. So that's surely got to be worth the trip all the way to the end of this video.